Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan. So people, myself included, are starting to finally beat Elden Ring, and after you beat it, you get that thing you get after you beat a really good game. Sadness. What game do I play next? How will I fill this Miyazaki and George R. R. Martin shaped hole in my heart? That's... That would be a really weird shape, actually. Let's not think about that. Well, don't fret, because if either you are new to Souls games and Elden Ring finally helped you get into it, or a veteran of the genre, I've got three games for you to try that are Souls-esque so you can keep that high going. And yeah, yeah, it would be really funny and very obvious for me to say Dark Souls Trilogy, Bloodborne, Sekiro, and end the video with that. I mean, I am saying that right now because, yeah, you should probably try those games if you haven't. They are all very good. But I'm going to leave From Software off and instead journey into the Poison Swampless Beyonds with these picks. So here's three games to try after beating Elden Ring. Our first game is Salt and Sanctuary, which is basically copying Dark Souls' homework and slapping it into a 2D space. It's got just about everything from these games. Places with mysterious and brooding names, a bunch of lore that only dedicated YouTubers can take the time out to decipher, heavy and light attacks, a stamina bar, and comedically large weapons. Hell, it even has a poison forest. And as an added bonus, you can actually jump in this game because it's a 2D platformer. So it basically was Elden Ring before Elden Ring. You know, minus all the other parts of Elden Ring, of course. The bottom line is Salt and Sanctuary is a very close translation of the Souls formula into a 2D space, and that is not a bad thing. While it isn't perfect, I think it's a great game to jump into for those who enjoyed Elden Ring's combat and aren't ready to dive into another 3D Souls-like, as the 2D element is different enough to require new strategies and builds. Plus, it's pretty much on everything, including the PS Vita. That's where I first played it. Anyone remember the PS Vita? No, you, you don't. Not even Sony remembers the PS Vita. Very sad. The Surge games were some of the first to emerge in the post-Dark Souls gaming scene when everybody was trying to make a Souls game and failing horribly. And while the Surge 1 holds a special place in my heart, it's not the best. Now the Surge 2, on the other hand, that's my jam. Rather than completely copy Dark Souls, they changed the combat to be significantly more parry-focused, as well as continued the cool mechanic from the Surge 1 of limb removal, which is your primary method of both acquiring new gear and upgrading the gear you have. See an enemy with a cool weapon? Cut his arm off and take it for yourself. Like a guy's stylish hat? Well, if he doesn't have a head any more, he ain't gonna be using it, so you might as well use it yourself. The bottom line is the Surge 2 is actually the game that got me into Souls likes, and while it's challenging, I found its combat system to be much easier to grasp as a noob, and the fun mechanic of ripping parts off your enemies to glue to yourself never got old. The first game is also fairly fun, although it is certainly less polished than the second, so if you're into a more sci-fi, counter-heavy version of a Souls game, these might be for you. Our last game is Zelda Breath of the Wild. Okay, wh why is this on here? This isn't a Dark Souls game. Well, think about it and you'll realize it is pretty obvious. It is very clear playing through Elden Ring that the game draws a ton of inspiration that was pioneered from Breath of the Wild. Hell, it has almost exactly the same introduction to its world. Wake up in a tomb, go up an elevator or some stairs, open a door, and there's a sweeping vista. But it's not just that, as Elden Ring's incredible sense of exploration and discovery can be directly connected back to the same feelings that were evoked in 2017's Breath of the Wild. The lack of map markers, the feeling you could find something cool around every corner, and the incredible freedom of Breath of the Wild were and still are pioneering to open world games to this day. And I'd like to think that if we didn't have Breath of the Wild, Elden Ring might have turned out very differently. The bottom line is that if your favorite parts about Elden Ring were the exploration, the beauty of the world, and that feeling of absolute freedom, you are going to love Breath of the Wild as it has that and in spades. Also, if you wished your weapons exploded after hitting an enemy with them a few times so you'd have to get a new one, then I have some even more great news for you as well. And that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. There are, of course, many, many Souls-like games that are very good to try. Please feel free to post them in the comments and suggest them. Maybe you know of some classic that everyone's overlooked that we should really be playing. But regardless, go out there and fill that Elden Ring-shaped hole in your heart with these three great games.